I found this $10 ugly table at the Goodwill and we're going to transform it into a beautiful piece of fine furniture. And this upcycle is brought to us by Squarespace. We are back from the Goodwill with this ugly 80s oak table. If you've been following this channel, you know that I hate oak. I consider it practice wood. So we're going to redo the entire top, something fancy, something modern, maybe mid-century modern, who knows? There'll be a modern in there. We got uh, the, the legs. I mean, we were real careful driving home, so I don't think we did that. So we gotta tighten up the legs. I think the first thing I need to do before we fancy this guy up is take off the top and then start working on the legs, sand off the finish, and uh, come up with a game plan. No fancy woodworking joinery in there. So the legs come right off, which is gonna make them a lot easier to work with. They are solid pieces of oak. The apron is not. The apron is veneered. The top is veneered, but the legs are solid oak. That gives us a lot more options to work with. Oh yeah, there we go. Quickest way to get off that face was over on the joiner. It still has these massive roundovers on there. I'm not a big fan of roundovers. So we're gonna cut off the roundovers and then chamfer everything so everything has a nice clean 45 edge. This is really going to help with the look of the leg. Got rid of all the roundovers. We got some nice chamfers on there. The, each piece has a cove cut in there. It's just like a little decorative cove. And I'm gonna get rid of that by cutting in a dado that we can then inlay a piece in there for a nice effect. And that is how you get rid of the 80s. So now I am just going to dye these legs black, cover up some of that red oakness. The second coat on here, just to make sure there's no oak showing. Hot tip, you don't want any oak showing in your projects. The top doesn't overhang. Actually, the, the style, what do you call these? The apron sticks out further than the top. I don't think I like that. I want the top to overhang. So my thought is just to take all of this and then just make it a little smaller. I could chop, everything is just screwed together. Nothing, there's no glue on this anywhere. So I could uh, unscrew these corner pieces, make these side pieces smaller. On these apron pieces, it's not solid oak. It's, it's veneered. So I'm trying to be very careful and sand down just to finish and not all the way through to the, the crap particle board that's inside there. And then I think I'm also gonna dye this black. So the apron and the legs all have this uniformity. This is so nice. This is, this is my favorite thing in the shop. It's so nice. And now we're just dyeing the apron pieces to match the legs. The legs are dry. We've got these two dados in here. So now we're going to make an inlay piece that's going to fit inside those dados. But this is looking so much better. We've got 45 chamfers on there. There's no roundovers. There's no oak showing. Got rid of the 80s. Now we're gonna glue in these strips. I sanded them first because I didn't want to sand away any of the dye that we have on the legs here. Legs are dry so I can cut off the excess here. That is back together. Everything, there's no glue. Everything is just kind of screwed back together. It's the way it was. I think that's gonna work fine. 
and it's sturdier than what it was before. But those legs look good. What do you think, Daniel? Looks pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Let's work on the top. The current top here has this oak veneer herringbone pattern, and we're gonna honor that. We're gonna use this as our substrate. And I've got a bunch of walnut and hickory here that we're gonna cut up into strips, glue them together, cut that into strips, flip some things around, glue that together. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we get a cool pattern. This is gonna look good. This is gonna be real good. Check this out. Milled up a bunch of walnut and hickory. Now we're gonna glue them up. I'm worried this isn't enough wood for this, but I've got a plan if it's not. So we'll just let that sit and dry for a few minutes and then we'll cut that up. We got that sanded down flat. I'm gonna cut 145 with the track saw and then do the remaining 45s at the table saw. I think this first cut is just easier this way. Here's where we can get crazy and you can get an infinite amount of designs. You could do a checkered pattern like this or you could do a chevron pattern like this. But I'm gonna cut this one more time after this glue up. My brain can't comprehend what it's gonna look like when I'm, we're done. We're just having fun and we're experimenting. Is it okay if we just have some fun? Can we just have some fun? Daniel? Kind of a tricky glue up because you want to line everything up perfect. Wipe off the excess and let that dry. That's going to look good. That's going to look real good. So now we take this out of the clamps. We're going to sand this down flat once again and repeat the process. I don't have any idea what this is going to look like. My brain can't visualize the next step, but I just know it's going to be cool. So now I'm drawing lines going this way for the final cut pattern. And um, I've never done this. I think it's gonna look cool One, two, or it's gonna look chaotic. So I'm gonna connect to this point to that point. I'm kind of rearranging this into this new pattern and look at this weird freakiness that we get here. You can play around with this and do different types of, of patterns. Uh, it's just we trying to find what works best. So that looks really cool. We started out with this huge board and now we only have this area right here. Just to get a little bit more yield, I think I'm gonna take these pieces to the bandsaw and cut them in half. And that's gonna give me twice as many pieces to work with. Also, that's going to give, it's gonna make this much thinner, which is going to make it more like a veneer. And then we can, it just gives us more options down the line. So let's get to resawing. This is gonna be so cool. I think we got it. I got the pattern that I want. It is all looking, <laughs> that looks so cool. I never would have guessed that that was going to be the pattern. Unfortunately, we got some knots in there, but we'll just have to fill that with epoxy and that'll be part of the design. I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it. Yeah, <laughs> that looks so cool. I've never done this before. How many times am I gonna say that, but I know that I'm gonna do this again. Somehow, when I cut this on the table saw, this was not perfectly straight. So I'm gonna to try to joint an edge on here. I don't know how it's gonna do with all this funky grain. Gotta take chances. The joining that works. So now I'm trying to glue all these together. This is gonna be a little tricky because they're so thin. It's gonna to wanna to pop up when we start to clamp. So we gotta get clamps on top first. 
And again, we just let that sit and dry. Got that out of the clamps. Looks like the Space Invader guy. That's looking so cool. When we get that sanded flush, whoo, I'm excited. So we're gonna glue this onto this board, but we still got a little bit more 80s to get rid of here. So we'll remove this. It looks like brass inlay, but it's, it's plastic. Daniel, you can take that home. Oh man, when did those come into style? This is going to get glued on to here. So now I need to make my outer frame that's gonna get glued on to this. I'm thinking walnut. So we sanded down the top, we're getting ready to glue it on there. It's cool that we hardly have any waste from the original table. We're just giving it a new facelift. And while I was sanding that down, I could smell like perfume and alcohol. Well, that was the 80s. Yeah, that was the 80s. It smelled like cocaine and Magnum PI. We use a pin nailer to hold things in place. Um, I, it's, it's, I nailed it to the bench. Um, <laughs> yeah, I nailed it to the bench. We put some tape on top of there so the glue doesn't come up through the knots. Make a sandwich. This goes into the bag. Close up the vacuum bag. So that'll sit in the vacuum bag for about an hour and then we'll We'll finish this guy up. In the meantime, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. Take this out of the bag. I have been using Squarespace for almost 10 years now because it, it just makes my life so much easier. What is Squarespace? Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to host your website, your domain, your contact form, your image galleries. It's a place to bring in all your social media feeds. Squarespace is your website. You can use Squarespace to sell physical and digital items, which is how I use it. You're probably a woodworker or a maker or an artist. You probably make things. You want to show off your things. You can use Squarespace for that. You can also sell both physical and digital items. I've written a few books. I sell them on my website. I also sell PDF plans that you can download from my website. It just makes my life so much easier. If you're like me, you need a website but you don't want to spend all your time making a website. You'd rather be in the shop making things. Squarespace is the perfect place to do so. Visit squarespace.com, and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now I'm gonna get some edge banding on this tabletop. I'm just using some solid walnut strips that we're just going to cut the length. And the final piece. So we've got to fill in some of these knots. This is my favorite moment of any project. <laughs> oh my gosh, that looks so good. Last thing I gotta do is screw it back to the top. As long as you don't look underneath, it's gonna look handmade. You can see where the old screws went into this chippy particle board. And we use all the same screws. Very resourceful.
Next up, I take this cheap plastic lamp and turn it into priceless fine furniture. And you can watch that by tapping here.